They would tell a story about a young guy who joins a local meditation group. And he goes his first time, and he's really excited. He spends an hour there. And as he's leaving, he says to the clerk at the desk, you know, how much, how much do I owe you? He said, well, each lesson is $20. So he looks in his wallet. He's fishing around for his bills. The lowest one he has, 100 So he hands the clerk, and he's, he's waiting. And the clerk's just standing, looking at him. Excuse me. I get, it's class cost $20. I just gave you a $100 bill. Don't you give people change here? I said, no, change must come from within. <laughs> In the broadest sense, the goal of meditation is to draw a Jew closer to God. In many other forms of meditation, the goal is self-realization. So while in Judaism we believe and give credence to the idea that clearing extraneous thoughts is a good thing, and feelings of inner peace and serenity are also a good thing, it's not the ultimate goal. The person hasn't achieved the pinnacle, what is meditation all about with those things? So I meditate. What is the goal? We've talked several times about the example of the thief who before breaking into the person's house that he's going to rob, prays to God that he should be successful. <laughs> the ultimate contradiction of terms. He's a thief right in front of the guy's house, about to rob them, and he prays to God that he should be successful. So, let's ask a question over here. Does the thief believe in God? Yeah, he does. He wouldn't be praying if he didn't believe in God. Just what's the problem over here? It hasn't hit him in a practical way. He believes, but his belief is more transcendent. It's more an ethereal idea than something that's part of his practical daily life. More common, how many people in their business dealings pray to God that they should be successful and then do shady business practices? It happens all the time. What's the idea? The person believes in God. They're praying. They're addressing their prayers, dear God. So how come they're doing things that God finds reprehensible? It's because they do believe it is in their head, but as it hasn't made its way down into their heart. It hasn't become a part of them. It hasn't become a part of who they are. They believe in God, but it's not part of their experience. In 11th century Spain, there was a very interesting work that was published. It's a work that's still studied very extensively to this day. It's called Choivos Halavavos, The Duties of the Heart. The author of this book said that in Judaism there are many works that describe how a person is meant to practice, what they're meant to do, what are the duties of the person. Put on tefillin, light Shabbat candles, what are our limbs supposed to do? But none of them talk about what are the duties of the heart. So he compiled a work that described the duties of the heart. What is meant to be integrated into our system? About a century later, the Rambam, the famed medieval sage Maimonides, made a compilation of all the 613 mitzvahs in the Torah. Among them are six mitzvahs that are meant to be done at every second. There's the six constant mitzvahs. They're obligatory at every moment. Right now, and now, and now, we're obligated in these six mitzvahs. What are they? Get your checklist out. See, if, see how well you're doing. Number one, to believe in God. Number two, to unify His name, to love God, to fear Him to love your fellow, and to not turn astray after 
one's heart's desires to the wrong things. Believing in, loving, fearing, these are not passive things. Love God. Oh yeah, I love God. I'm doing that right now. I love him. Most of us, we don't even, we don't even think about it. Right? Do you love God? If someone would ask you, do you love God? I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I do. I love it. But what does that mean? I love God. So these are, these are commands. These are obligations that we have that are not meant to be passive. I love God now. I fear God now. Right now. Right, 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 yeah, right here, right now. These are not passive mitzvahs. These are something that have to be taken to heart. These are things that have to be experienced. Love is an emotion. Love has to be felt. Love is something that is part of who you are. The verse tells us in the book of Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy, Know this day and take it into your heart that Hashem is God in the heavens above, in the earth below, there is none else. Know this day and take it to your heart. Not just know, but take it to your heart. Make it a part of you. Make it a part of your experience that God is God. The Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, brings in his famous work, the Tanya, that this is one of the 613 mitzvahs of the Torah. Every Jew has an obligation, has the opportunity to not only know, but to take it to heart. We all have to meditate. Through meditation, through thinking about stuff, that's what evokes our emotions. Thank you.